Yeah, come on, come on. How's everybody doing? Come on, let's welcome those that are watching online. Summers Point, Mays Landing. And yes, come on, wasn't groundbreaking at EHT absolutely amazing last week? Come on, God showed up. And don't tell me we can't worship in a warehouse. Don't tell me we can't worship with fluorescent lights and uh, no chairs. And I mean, the list went on and on and on. But uh, it was absolutely incredible. Thank you, thank you to everyone that was there. Hey, I'm going to encourage you, uh, drive by, okay? Just don't interrupt the construction equipment on site. But uh, big tractors, big excavators, I mean, boys' toys are out there. And I literally beg my wife to come with me. She doesn't want to go, but I'm like, come on, honey, it's cool. But my son, me and my son, we're there all the time seeing what's going on. So come on, when you get there, pray over what God is doing. And we are excited because God is up to something in this community. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, God is up to something in this community. Come on, that was terrible. Let's try again. Maze Landing, God is up to something in this community. Yeah, come on. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing uh, today in each of our hearts, each of our lives. We thank you that you are up to something in our lives. And we commit this time to you. Holy Spirit, right now, come on, Spirit of God, and speak to us clearly right now in this place. We open up our hearts to you. We open up our minds to you. And we pray that you would speak so clearly to us. God, where there is a miracle needed, give us a miracle right now. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, let's uh, jump into really a message this weekend and next weekend. Easter is around the corner. I don't know if you realize that. Like, Easter is around the corner, and it is the Super Bowl uh, for church. It's what we think about. It's what we pray about. It's what we uh, plan about, uh, all these different types of things. And so the vision here at Fusion Church, if you've recently joined us or maybe you're a guest today, in fact, come on, let's put our hands together. Let's appreciate all our guests that are with us today. Come on, Maze Landing, come on, put our hands together. Yeah, all of our guests that are with us. And, and, or maybe you've just come in in the last few weeks. The, the vision here, the vision statement here at Fusion Church is that we have a desire to reach people that are far from Jesus, okay? So reach people that are far from Jesus. Number two is equip. Christ followers. So we want to do uh, we want to do the reaching people far from Jesus. The second thing is we want to be able to equip Christ followers. And the third thing is we want to be able to go to all the nations. Okay. So the first word is real easy. The first word is what? It's reach. Everyone say reach. Come on, Maze Landing. Summer's point. Reach. Okay. Second word is what's the second word? It is equip. The third word is go. Okay. So it's reach, equip, go. Let's say that together. Reach, equip, go. Okay. Let's try one more time. Reach. Equip, go. It's like a delay, you know, like they're like, what else is he going to say? Okay, let's try one more time real loud. It is reach, equip, go. Okay, so we want to reach people far from Jesus. And, and, and we, we don't want to, listen, can I, can I let you into an inside secret around here? We don't want to reach Christians. That's not our job. Our job is to reach people that are going to hell. Make sense? Our job is to plunder hell and to populate heaven. And so we want to reach people that are far from Jesus. Here's the good thing. At one point, all of us were far from Jesus, correct? Like at one, none of us was born. People come up to me all the time. They say, pastor, I was born a Christian. And I'm like, I ain't getting into a debate with you right now. But honey, dude, bro, girlfriend, you weren't born a Christian. You were born a sinner. You were messed up from day one. And only because of the grace of God were you saved. Only because of the price of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross were you saved. You weren't born perfect because I got an 11-month-old at home, and she is not perfect. I've got a 3-year-old, and she's not perfect. I've got a 7-year-old, and she's not perfect. And I've got a 10-year-old boy, and he's not perfect either, okay? But they're all getting there. Come on, tell your neighbor, you're not perfect either. Come on, look at them. In their eyes, you're not perfect either. So we want to reach people that are far from Jesus. We want to equip Christ followers, and we want to go. We, the, the equipping is massive. That's our connect groups. That's our circles. That, that, that's one-on-one -on -one mentorship. That's discipleship. That's our prayer meetings. And then the go is the thing that we do when we've been reached and we've been equipped and going can happen across the street. It can happen in different nations. This week, uh, through uh, some of our teams in the Dominican Republic, we were able to build the 100th house in the Dominican Republic. 
I think we've got a picture of the hundredth house. We've got a picture of the hundredth house uh, that they were building. Look at that. Come on, let's, let's give glory to God. That is absolutely amazing. One hundred houses uh, through the ministry uh, that we support down there and a ministry here in this region. A hundred houses have been built to give people safety. And, and so uh, going happens not just to the Dominican Republic. Uh, going doesn't just happen to Peru next year. We go down there as a church, uh, Nicaragua in the summer. But going happens across the street. Okay? Going happens uh, in our community. Going happens in our neighborhood. Going happens in uh, the places where we work. Going happens in all these different places. And so today I want to spend some time talking about what, what does the goal look like? What does it look like to just walk on over? What does it look like to walk on over and have a conversation? What does it look like to share your story with what God's doing in your life? What, what does it look like to share your baptism experience? What, what does it look like to share God getting the glory of what He's doing here in Fusion Church? And to kind of set up what God is going to do in, in a supernatural and a massive way over Easter, starting on Monday, uh, March 26, we, we're, which is the week before Easter, we're going to go into seven days of prayer and fasting, okay? And so if you just think real easy, fusionchurch.cc, and then just put in the word Easter, or literally put in fusion and Easter, and it will come up on Google. But fusionchurch.cc slash Easter, you can sign up uh, for 24-7 prayer. And so we have one hour time slots. Two people can take those time slots. And I love, I love, absolutely love that we have a church that's going to be praying for 24-7 before we get into our Easter weekend. Come on, let's celebrate a church that prays in a powerful way. And so 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're going to be praying as we go into this Easter weekend. And again, as you leave all of our locations today, you're going to get a pack of Easter invitational cards that you can give out. And we have services on Friday night, we have services on Saturday night, and we have services on Sunday morning. And so you can choose any of those options. And this is what we're asking, is that if you're going to come to church on Sunday, kind of all church-wide, hey, serve one of the other services, okay? Go ahead and tell your neighbor, serve one of the other services. That's a good thing there. Serve one of the other services. So if you're coming on Friday night, then say, hey, I want to serve on the Saturday services. May's Landing, come over to Summers Point, Summers Point, go over to May's Landing. If you're coming here on a Friday night, tell Pastor Tom, hey, I'm going to come down there on May's Landing, and I'm the pray, I'm the serve, and I'm the love, and I'm going to do what I need to do in all those places. But before we get there, sign up so that we can pray and fast and believe God to do the miraculous. And so why? We need the miraculous to lay a pathway to what God is doing in our region. Let me say that again. We need the miraculous to lay a pathway for what God is doing in our region. And many times, we just need to simply look and see where God is working. I'm telling you, God is working in this Easter season. We're going to be having baptisms on Friday night, baptisms on Saturday at Summers Point, and then both locations on Sunday. May's Landing, you're getting your first baptisms in a movie theater. Come on, let's celebrate that. Yeah. How much better you get to be baptized and then go catch a movie. Isn't that pretty cool? And, and, and I promise you, uh, Pastor Tom has confirmed this. The water is going to be warm, okay? So I know some of you are like, how cold is it going to be? No, the water is going to be warm at May's Landing. But, but what does it look to just walk over? That, that's really the title today, just walk over. Come on, tell your neighbor, just walk over. Come on, get a little bit of passion in that. Just walk over. What, what does it look to walk over? I, I mean... Jesus was into reaching people far from him. In fact, he kind of really didn't like the church people of that time, but he was into having these conversations. He wanted to reach out to people. He was passionate about, about walking over. And so you, you might say, Pastor, why are we talking about this? We're talking about this because Jesus was passionate about reaching people. It's the very reason that he came to this earth. In fact, as we open scripture, maybe you got your Bible with you or you got it on the app. But, but Matthew chapter 4, we're going to look at a portion of scripture, but I want to be able to give a little bit of a background to this before we begin. And, and in the portion of scripture that we're going to look at in verse 18, he is doing something. But I want to spend some time before that. In the beginning of chapter 4, it talks about that at that moment, he goes into the wilderness 
and he is tested. And then he comes out of the testing and he begins to preach. And then once he has finished preaching, he gathers some people together. And that's where we're going to jump in, in verse 18. It says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, it says, As Jesus was walking, the title of the message is, Walk on Over. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Let's read verse 19 together. Come, follow me, Jesus said. Are we reading? Let's try that again. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and they followed him. So Jesus is t- taking a walk. And as he's taking a walk, he encounters some people that are fishing. And in the encounter of fishing, they're fishing. I mean, they're, they're casting their nets. He says, hey, guys, come and follow me. I'm not going to allow you to get more physical fish, but I'm going to make you fishers of men. What they do is obedience. They drop their nets and they follow him. They, they become the first disciples of Jesus. Jesus walked over to them and gave them an invitation. Take a moment and think about your life. Who are the people in your life right now that you can give an invitation to? In fact, when you were walking in today, you received this My Five card. We've probably used it the last two years. But on the back is five people's names that I would love maybe in this time together for you to fill out and say, these are the people over the next two weeks that I need to walk over to. These are the people that I need to start a conversation with. These are the people that I need to invite. These are the people that I need to be praying for. These are the people that in my 24-7 prayer times that I'm signing up for, I'm gonna be praying specifically for their names. I've started writing out my list. In fact, I keep a, a, a running list of my five. There's also more, so don't think you have to be selfish and just get one, okay? You can go to the back and tell the usher, hey, Mr. Usher, can I get like 15 more of these, okay? So you're not, you're not limited to five, but I think five, is, it works here. And so Jesus walked on over, and he gave them an invitation. And he gave them an invitation, number one, because he just did it. Like, think about it. Jesus just did it. Like, he was walking, and he gave them an invitation, How many people do you and I on a daily basis walk by and we never give them an invitation? We never begin a conversation. We we never hear the the, the cry of their heart. We never hear the pain. I mean, come on, let's be honest. How many people in the grocery store do you just, you walk by? Or how many people on the street corner? Or how many people in the supermarket? Or how many people on your job or your school or the hospital, wherever you might go? How, How many people do we just walk by? But Jesus did it. Like he just did it. He, he reached out. He engaged in conversation. The, the second thing as I was reading this is that Jesus recognizes that they were busy. I mean, can, can I be honest? Like we live in a busy culture, correct? Like we go from morning until night. And, and Jesus recognizes they were, they were busy. In fact, in, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, he says, They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Have you ever seen a lazy fisherman? No, because they wouldn't be a fisherman, correct? Like if you're, a, if you're a lazy fisherman, you ain't catching no fish means you're hungry and you're not a fisherman anymore. And, and, and yet Jesus says to them, he says, hey, they're, they're casting the net. And, and I don't know about you, but, but Jesus is not bothered that they're busy. And I think sometimes for you and I, as we're thinking about Easter and thinking about what God is doing in our region, I, I think sometimes we think, oh, they're too busy for us. That they've got too much going on. There's way too much drama in their life. Like, I don't want to get involved in what's going on in their life. They're, they're working three jobs. They're, they're running a company. They're, they're finishing their associates. They're, they're graduating with their masters. They've got too many sports on the weekend. And, and I think we, we write people off because they're too busy. And yet Jesus doesn't. In fact, I was thinking, have you ever engaged with a busy fisherman? 
Like, have you ever gone up to a fisherman that, that's pulling in a net or throwing out a net and try to have a conversation with him? I mean, I can just imagine what that looks like. There's probably a, a, when you say, hey, Mr. Fisherman, there's a grunt that comes from them. Like, they, they're not even going to look up, like, Ugh. you know, like, I, I, they, they're, not, they're not perusing Insta stories. That they're not sipping a Wawa coffee. They didn't go over to Starbucks and get a latte. No, they, they, they've got grisly hands. They, they smell of freshly manicured fishing cologne. They're pulling the, the, the clothes they're wearing. They probably didn't put in the washing machine the night before. So it smells of fish. And in that moment, you have to engage in a conversation. I would presume that they're very busy. And yet Jesus doesn't stop there because he begins to engage them. He recognizes that they're busy, but he doesn't use it as an excuse. How many of us use busyness as an excuse not to reach out to someone? See, I think on a, on a busy scale, like those bros were busy. Like if they didn't catch any fish, no one was going to eat that night. And yet Jesus engages in that conversation. I wrote this down for myself and I'll share it with you. But, but I said this, I said, kingdom business always takes precedence over worldly business. T take a moment, kind of just drink that in. I, I had to drink it in for a little moment. Kingdom business always takes precedence of a worldly business. So, so let, let me unpack that for a moment. The fishermen were busy. You're busy. The person that you want to write down is busy. But I'm here today to tell you that kingdom business always takes precedence over worldly business. The kingdom of God is the only thing that's going to withstand eternity. This world that we live in, the sports that our kids are involved in, the house that you're trying to make sure that is ready to go for the spring and the freshly laid mulch on the outside and the debt that you're trying to pay off and the kids that you're trying to raise and the relationship that you're in and the, the master's degree that you're trying to get and the extra hours that you need to work and the 10 fours that you have going on but you really want to clock down on that, all of that's going to pass away. And Jesus recognizes that. But Jesus recognizes that kingdom business is the most important thing. Hey, I know you're busy. But I want to engage you in some conversation. In fact, I think Jesus had a crazy tendency to interrupt worldly business. If we read the Gospels, like Jesus is always interrupting worldly business. And I think, could I be honest? Maybe in the next two weeks as a church, we've got to do some interrupting in worldly business. Like if someone's busy, maybe Jesus is calling you to reach out to them. Maybe Jesus is asking you to interrupt their busy schedule that's going on in their life. This week I was talking to one of our Fusionites over here, and uh, they were leading one of the after-church get-togethers, these uh, dinner meetups, these lunch meetups that we have. And God was speaking to this person through the Holy Spirit and saying, hey, I want you to pay for everyone at the lunch meetup. And you know how it goes when God's speaking. There's always an argument that proceeds, correct? Like, no, I'm not going to pay. And God's like, no, you're going to pay. No, I'm not going to pay. No, you're going to pay. I ain't got no money, God. And, and uh, th 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 that didn't happen, but that's the way God and I argued together. And so at the end of the, the lunch meetup, the, the, the waitress comes out with one check. And God goes, ha, 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 I got you. And they're like, you know, so, so the, the guy leading it, you know, grabs the check. He's like, okay, God, well, I'm going to pay. And he goes up and, and he gives the, the waitress the bill and he, he pays like $160. And he looks at the waitress who is busy because it's lunchtime and she's sweating and she's running around and she's serving all these tables. And he says, hey, we're from Fusion Church and I want to let you know that there's going to be a big tip at the end of this. Now, he had no idea what was going to happen after that. So he goes back to this uh, meetup table that we have. And if you've never gone to a lunch meetup or a dinner meetup, like, go. It is pretty cool. You get to meet people and hang out with some of our team leaders and our staff. And so he goes back to the table and he says, hey, guys, I've taken care of the bill, but I want you to leave a tip. 
And some people were like, well, what kind of tip? He's like, just figure it out. Like, leave a tip. Like, if you're going to pay for the meal anyway, like, isn't that the tip? Well, at the end of the day, when they walked away from the table, this young lady got a tip of $110. Okay, $110. Because people were generous to interrupt someone's busy life and step in in that situation. I thought, well, how difficult was that? I mean, you were paying for lunch anyway. So someone obeyed God. And I love, I love, I love that Fusion Church is a church that obeys God. Like we're crazy generous in this place. Crazy generous to what God is doing in this community. Crazy generous outside of this community. I mean, I hear about stories of paying it back, paying it forward, paying it sideways, paying it up, paying it down. And I'm like, man, that's my church. Like, I'm proud to be a part of my church. But come on, over the next two weeks, like, let's interrupt this community. So next week, we'll we'll get details. We're going to do like the donut drive again. How many of us remember the donut drive from last year? Okay, so we're going to, we're going to flood this community with donuts from Fusion Church. And I'm telling you what, like the Air Force Base last year, the 177th Wing, like they were overwhelmed with donuts out there because people were interrupting them with donuts in this community. Prayer and fasting is a way to interrupt the the kingdom on a spiritual way and get in. And and so in, in this next few days, like, God, who can I interrupt? Who who can I step into their busy world? Because if Jesus did it, you and I can do it. Now, come on. Again, we know like some of you are like, uh, you know, like, is it a mean? It's not a mean interrupting. But but, but it's just like, hey, can I get your attention? Like, I know you're running a thousand miles a minute. But if Jesus could step into a fisherman, I think we could step into other people's lives. Here's the third thing I realized as I was reading this scripture over here. But Jesus invited them into a journey of community. He invited them. I think think that's so important as a church to get in this next season that we're going into. Is that this church is not about buildings. It's not about people. It's not about size or locations or campuses or marketing or donuts or branding or social media. It's not about, I don't care about any of that stuff. But what I care about is people. And what Jesus did, which was so amazing, is that he engages some fishermen and he says, I think there's something better that you could be a part of. Like, I think that you're missing something in this thought process. He simply ushers these words, come, follow me. I mean, come, follow me. Come, follow me. And those fishermen drop everything and follow Jesus. I mean, as I took this scripture, I mean, meditate. I mean, I just dug into the scripture. And I thought, I mean, like they didn't know that in 2018, in the middle of March, in South Jersey, we would be preaching about these dudes. It wasn't like there was an Insta story available in the future so they could see what was going on. And yet, those three words, come follow me, were were so kingdom saturated. And then that's the point that I'm trying to get home. Like if your interruption is kingdom saturated, God is gonna be behind you. If what we're doing in this community is kingdom saturated in prayer and fasting and worship, then God's going to make a way where there is no way. But if we're just there to interrupt and we're just there to make some noise, I mean, there's a lot of things that are making noise within our lives. But if we're saturated with prayer and with fasting and with community, then there's a place to engage in. And so Jesus invites him into a journey of community. Because why? I think maybe he understood like, Those bros were lonely. Like they were struggling with loneliness. I think most times that I'm engaging with someone, including Brendan, okay? So including myself. I walk away and I go, everyone's lonely. Like everyone's lonely. Like have you been there before where you're just like, okay, I feel lonely right now. Like everyone's talking, everyone's having a good time. I mean, like last Sunday at the groundbreaking, like, I mean, it was packed in that place. Like, I was blown away. Black Horse, Black Horse Pike was backed up. We were trying to park people on the road and in the dirt and in the mud. And I walked, I, I walked through everything. And I, I mean, I'm the pastor of the church. Like, I, I, tr- I think I would probably know the most people in the church, correct? Like, 
like highest average. I mean, maybe Pastor Tom knows more people, than, but, but you know, like, I mean, and, and I walk through the church and I'm just like, and everyone's talking and everyone's having a great time and everyone's in their groups and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> like, I'm just going to go eat some worms someplace else. Like, Everything, I mean, everything's going as the way it's supposed to go. The, you know, uh, backhoes are starting outside, the excavators, the worship teams. I mean, and I'm just like, everybody's lonely. I mean, let, let's be dead. Like, like, let, let's take off the mask and say every single one of us here at some point in the last seven days, in the last 24 hours of each day, you were like, everyone else is having a great time except me. Like, you're, I mean, come on, let's be honest, you're, you're flipping through social media. You're like, well, that's awesome, that's awesome, that's awesome. I'm sitting on my couch. That sucks, you know? You see everything else going on. And so I think it's the lie of the enemy. But Jesus engages someone in that moment. So, so tip, like tip over the next two weeks, engage someone that's lonely. Engage them in the journey of community. And what, why do I say the journey of community? Like, don't just invite them to church. Like, I think it's mean to just invite someone to church and go, hey, you sit there and I'm going to sit here because I don't want to know who you are. Like, if you invite them, bring them in. Let them know, hey, sit next to me. In- introduce them to me. I mean, I love connecting people when they come into the house of God. Let, let them know multiple services. Let them know, hey, come and we're going to go out to the exchange. We're going to go out to the pizza shop in Mays Landing. We're going to go out and, and be a part of these lunch meetups. And, and my job as a Christ follower is to get you connected as soon as possible. Like, I'm going to sit with you in growth track. I'm going to get you in a connect group. I'm going to take you to a ministry because if you had a tough time connecting in a church, how much harder is it for other people? I mean, we were all new at one point, correct? Like, no one was born in this church. Everyone's new at Maze Landing. At some, at some point, you walked into Maze Landing, and this is the question that you asked. Where is the church meeting in Maze Landing? Like, which of the 16 theaters do I need to go into? Like, I fielded a phone call from someone the other day, and they were like, hey, I got a question. I was like, yeah, I never pick up the phone in the church. I literally walked by, and the phone was ringing. I just picked it up. And as I picked it up, I'm like, did I make the right decision? I did, I did. And so the person said, hey, we're, we're new in the region. We, we, we're looking for a church. We, we saw that you have a, 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 a church in Mays Landing, and we, we want to go visit. They said, but we have no idea where it's at. I said, it's in the, Regal, in the Regal movie theater. They were like, yeah, we get that. But what does that mean? I was like, you, you know, you go through, and it's like theater eight. Like, bro, when you step into the theater, you will know Fusion Church is in this place. Isn't that right? Like, if you've never been there, like, you step in. And Fusion Church owns the movie theater. And, and it makes sense. But, but come on, we knew that. Like, hey, Summer's Point, like when you were driving up, you're like, are they crazy back in that place? Like some of us are like, hey, this was a gym one time. And this was a swimming pool. Like I swam in the swimming pool and now they have a church in this place. Like that's weird. And, and so if we engage someone like Jesus did and we open our mouths, like Jesus opened his mouth. And come on, let's engage. Come on, press in just a little bit. Like the bro is Jesus. He could have walked by the fishermen and just went, whoosh. He could have walked by and just looked at them. Let's be honest. King of kings, Lord of lords, great I am, Alpha and Omega, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. Like he got all those names. He could have walked by the, the busy fishermen and just went, come to me. But no, he engages them. He engages what's going on. He opens his mouth. And I I think over these next two weeks, church, can we open our mouths? Can we share our stories of baptism? Like I love sometimes on social media, like, you know, you go back and you bring up your story of baptism. And I love to read the comments below. When we talked about when you were first saved, did you remember the place and the time and the date? So many of you came and shared that and shared that on social media. Like I think social media is one of the greatest avenues to interrupt what people are going through in this region because they can watch, they can log online, they can see like, hey, they they can see if we're crazy in this place or not crazy in this place. I mean, I meet so many people that literally watched us online for three months before they walked through these doors. For three months, they were like, hey, is this place legitimate? Like what I'm hearing, is it legitimate? 
So share your baptism story. I mean, if you're getting baptized, and I pray, like, there should not be one fusionite not baptized after Easter. Does that make sense? Like, if you ain't baptized, like, I'm going to be praying for you. So, like, maybe you want a chill baptism. We're going to make Friday night a little bit more chill versus the hyped baptisms that we have on the weekend experience, okay? So maybe Saturday, and you invite people. And, and so, hey, invite them and say, hey, we're going to have a thing at my house afterwards. We're going to have appetizers at my house afterwards and invite them to be a part of that. So many of you shared the groundbreaking uh, and what God was doing. How many of us have shared our salvation experience? Like legitimately during lunch, maybe you've got a lunch room, like just pull up a chair and just begin a conversation with someone that you know. And what do you do? You just begin with a pain point in your life. Come on, get this. Everyone's got pain. And so when I share a story, I start with a pain point. A time I was disappointed. A time I was struggling. A time I nearly lost everything. A time I gave up everything to move to this country. And, and, and in that, there's a little bit of legitimacy. And in that is an opportunity to be able to share that experience that freedom experience, that journey that God has you in. So I think maybe in these next two weeks, like, let's be praying. Let's be writing out this My Five card. I hope you've done this in this last few minutes. Here, here's number four. That as I read this, this scripture, I see this. Jesus gave them a vision bigger than themselves. Like, like those guys that were, that were fishing over there, he says, come and follow me. And he says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to just let you be like a rock star fisherman. No, I'm going to allow you to be fishers of men. Like, I'm going to give you a big, hairy, audacious goal. I'm going to give you a BHAG. I'm going to give you something that you can buy into and something that you can believe in and something that you can give your whole life to. And here's the groundbreaking thing that I see in that. Literally, they drop their nets and they follow him. In Matthew 19, it says, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out and I will allow you to be a fisher of men. Man, when I read that, I go, God, I think you're doing something absolutely miraculous in this community. God, I think you're doing absolutely something supernatural in this community. And all you're asking us to do is to have some faith, to walk over to someone and engage in a conversation. And I know sometimes it's risky. And I know sometimes there's some fear in our hearts. But I'm here today to tell you if Jesus did it, if Jesus walked on over, like I think you can too. See, the vision that we have at Fusion, it's so much bigger than ourselves. And I'm begging us as a church, in these next 14 days, let's put selfishness on the shelf. And let's pull the supernatural into the earthly. So we begin not to think about ourselves, but we begin to think about those that are dying and those that are going to hell. And maybe, just maybe, you and I, we have an opportunity to pluck someone out of hell. And through the power of the Holy Spirit and the working of grace and mercy in that person's life and the blood of Jesus that was shed upon Calvary's cross that we would see them cross over into eternity. That? That's the only thing in the Bible that says there's a party for. That's the only thing in the Bible that says there is a great celebration when someone enters into eternity. Like nothing else is there a celebration except souls that are saved and step into eternity. And here's the thing that we close with, number five. So number one, Jesus did it. Number two, he, he gave them something to think about. Number three, he engaged them in their busyness. Number four, he, he gave them something to think about that was bigger than themselves, a big, hairy, audacious goal. And number five is this, that obedience brings blessing. See, those disciples that were fishers of men, and just get this in this next minute, those disciples, like they weren't fishing and went, I'm Peter, because Peter was there. I'm going to walk on water one day. I'm, a, I'm Peter. 
I'm going to walk on water. No, 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 no. Like they dropped their nets and they followed Jesus and they had no idea. Peter had no idea that one day he was going to walk on water. He had no idea that one day he was going to be at the mountain of transfiguration and see the glorified Jesus. They had no idea that he was going to be the leader of the disciples. He had no idea that first and second Peter would be in the Bible, the greatest book to ever hit this world. He had no idea that he would go back to Jesus like over and over and go, hey, Jesus. So he talked about forgiveness, but like, I've got some questions. Hey, Jesus, you got this parable, and it really doesn't make sense, but, but the other bros, they're too scared to ask you, but I got some boldness, and I'm going to ask you. He had no idea the day he left his net would be a day that he would step out of a boat and walk on water. And I think Fusion Church is that church. I think Fusion Church is that church of obedience. Like, we don't sit down and ponder that we're walking water, but can I tell you, we're a church that walks on water. We don't sit down and think about all these different strategies, but we simply say we want to be radically obedient. And I pray for you today, whoever you are, that you'd be radically obedient. So in the 30 seconds before we close, who's on your my five? I pray that you'd be radically obedient because in obedience there is blessing today. You're not going to leave this here. You're going to take this and you're going to pray over these people like crazy. The second question in the application is this. So where, where do you need to be obedient this week? What do you need to do to be obedient? Where do you need to be obedient just to, to walk on over? Just walking over. Well, what do you need to do? We all live in different situations and different circumstances, but I pray that you would hear it. Come on, let's pray. Jesus, right now, come and fill us with your love, 